Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to run through what to expect from a saddle fitting, so what we need you to do in preparation and what we're going to do when we're there. So sit back, make yourself a cup of tea and hopefully, unlike Pumpkin who's falling asleep, enjoy! Hello again to regular viewers and hello to any new viewers. So if you're a new viewer, a quick introduction is I'm Poppy Weber. I'm a qualified saddle fitter for the Society of Master Saddlers and I'm based in the east of England. This is Pumpkin. She's a Cocker Spaniel, well, an American Cocker Spaniel puppy and she likes to sleep through all my videos. I do regular videos about saddle fitting, saddles and other such things like that. And I also do a monthly live video where you can join in and ask questions live. So let's get back to the nitty gritty for today. What to expect from a saddle fitting and what we expect from you during a saddle fitting. First of all, you should have your saddle fitted at least once every six months. This is because your horse changes shape, your saddle flocking settles and a multitude of other reasons and it's so much better to get your saddle fitted before a problem occurs than waiting for something to happen and then calling up your saddle fitter by which point a problem has already occurred. So get it checked regularly at least every six months or as often as your qualified saddle fitter tells you to get it checked. First of all, we'll think about what you need to do in preparation for your saddle fitting because there's nothing worse than saddle fitters than getting to a yard and the person hasn't even caught the pony, they're knee deep in mud, the pony won't get caught, we sit there for 20 minutes waiting for the pony to get caught. So what we expect from you is we expect you to have the pony in, the worst of the mud removed. It's not always possible to have your horse completely spotless because some horses live out. Um, I went to see one the other day that lives out and doesn't wear a rug and that's fair enough. Some horses can't wear rugs or do live out. Um, and in that sort of a situation, we don't expect your horse to be spick and span, but we do need the worst of the mud removed from under the saddle area and also the bridle area because you don't want to put, be putting tack on to where the horse is muddy or dirty. Also, you'll be surprised at the amount of people that don't have their tack ready, or in fact don't even have their tack with them. I've been to yards and the people haven't got their bridles, or haven't got their girths, or haven't got their stirrups. And then we can't do a saddle fitting because you haven't got the equipment that we need. So, make sure your horse is in, and make sure you've got all the equipment that you need. So you need your saddle, you need your bridle, you need your numner, you need your girth, you need your stirrups, you need your stirrup leathers, and all of that kind of stuff, because without that we can't fit your saddle. So when I say saddle pads, I mean the saddle pad that you would normally ride in. There's no point in us fitting the saddle to your horse with a pad that's completely different to the one that you would normally ride in. So if you normally use a thin cotton numner, yay for you, um, bring that along. If you like the big glitzy, shiny, silky, brightly coloured, matchy-matchy ones, then that's cool, bring them along too though. Because if they do make the saddle sit slightly differently than the thinner ones, and we'd always want to fit it with the one that you would normally ride in. It can be also really useful to have a couple of spares there, different types, in case we say to you, oh actually that one's a bit too shiny or a bit too slippery or a bit too padded and you need something a little bit thinner or cottonier or stickier or whatever. Not only do we want you to have your saddle and everything ready, it's really really useful to us if you take your saddle pad off the saddle, take your girth off the saddle, take any seat saver that you have off the saddle because we can't fit a saddle with a seat saver on because we can't see the balance of the seat properly with a big bulky seat saver on it. So. Saddle pad off because we're going to initially put the saddle on without any saddle pad. Girth off because again it's easier for us to put the saddle on without the girth attached to it. Seat saver off because we can't see how your saddle fits with the seat saver on I'm afraid. So all of that kind of gumph off your saddle. Another thing that people always forget is their hat. So don't forget your hat. We can't fit a saddle to your horse if you haven't got a hat on your head. Our insurance would definitely not cover us and it'll be a bit irresponsible of us. So we want to see you riding safely all the time. So proper boots and proper hat, please, and gloves if you need them. So make sure again, you've got them all ready, not half a mile away in a tack room, not in the back of your car that your boyfriend's taken to work. They're ready for us so that when we get there, we can move on as quickly as we can. One of the really common questions that we get asked about saddle fittings is, do I need to ride? We get there sometimes and people haven't got a bridle or haven't got the hat and they say, oh, I didn't know I had to ride. I've never had to ride before for a saddle fitting, but you do always have to ride for saddle fittings. Actually, that's a lie. It's not always because in some cases you don't, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But you do, on the whole, always need to ride for saddle fitting for a number of reasons. We need to see if the saddle fits you as a rider. We need to see if the saddle fits your horse with you on as a rider. Saddles can look beautifully fitted when the horse is stood still, statically, not moving. Saddle sits on their back, lovely. You go it up, lovely. You put the rider on, oh dear God, the whole thing changes. So we definitely, 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 definitely need to see you on board. 
not your friend from down the road, not anything like that, but the, the person that rides the horse all the time or most of the time. The main rider needs to be there. If the horse is shared between two riders, which isn't uncommon or even more, it can be useful to have both riders there, especially if they're very different shapes or sizes or weights, because how one rider sits in the saddle isn't necessarily how another rider sits on the saddle. And so, for example, the clearance over the rhythm might be fine with one rider, but if another rider came along that was significantly heavier, for example, then it might sit differently. Or if one rider's leg might fit in really nicely and then another rider comes along with gigantically long spider legs and then they don't fit in the saddle so well. So, in answer to that age-old question, do I need to ride my horse? Yes, you do. Now, what about unbacked horses? Well, that is one of the situations where you don't have to ride. Unbacked horses and horses that are just coming out of injury, they're, for example, just been given the all clear by the vet to start work and they're not quite in work yet, but people want to get their saddles checked. So it's a brilliant idea, absolutely like good on you. Woohoo, you're the best. If you get your saddle checked on an unbacked horse and a horse that's just come back from injury and they're both times that you really, really, really want your saddle to fit perfectly. You don't want a horse's first experience of a saddle to be uncomfortable, uh -uh, definitely not. And equally, you don't want a horse coming back from injury, coming back from kissing spine operation, for example, and for his first feeling of that saddle back on his back to feel horrible. You don't want that. But in those cases, you often can't ride, and that's fine. So if you're a really nervous rider, and this happens a lot, I see a lot of nervous riders who don't like riding in front of people, then please don't worry. It's so important to ride in your saddle fitting, and the saddle fitter, honestly, isn't looking at your riding. For starters, myself, world's worst rider, hands up. I've been riding for over 40 years and I am still officially probably the world's worst rider. So honestly, we're not looking at your riding. We just want to check that you fit in the saddle and that you're comfortable. If it means you have to have somebody there to lead you around or to walk around with you, then that's fine. If it means you have to have another rider there to get on first, then okay, that's fine too. But we really want to know that that saddle fits you and your horse together. So we do really want to see you ride. Again, when it comes down to nervous riders, so some people don't like to canter, for example, um, and that's fine because you know they're a little bit nervous or they've had an accident. In that case, it can be useful to have somebody else there who will canter the horse because personally, I like to see the horse ridden in all three paces under saddle for a saddle fitting. So if you're capable of walking and trotting but you're a little bit worried about cantering, then just getting someone else to do the canter work can be helpful. So if you are nervous and you don't like riding in front of people, then drag your friend or your instructor along and they'll be able to help and support you. But honestly, saddle fitters aren't there to judge your riding or judge how scared you are or laugh at the fact that you need to be led around. I see so many people that get led around in saddle fittings, it's really no problem at all. So that's the preparation stuff done. Now what happens during the saddle fitting? Well, first of all, I get there tend to introduce ourselves to each other, have a bit of a chat, and I'll ask you some general chit-chat questions. And you might think, oh, she's a right chit-chatter, but actually some of the chit-chat questions help me get some information about you. So if I'm chit-chatting away about your riding and what sort of things do you do, and I see you looking very nervous and anxious and looking at the floor, then I know that you're a little bit worried, and so I'll phrase my questions a bit differently. On my sheet, personally, I, um, I mark down quite a lot of the answers because they're quite important, I think. So I ask you your name, your contact details, your height and your size. All very important. So for example, if you are a teenage girl and you're five foot two, and then I go back out to you six months later and you're five foot four, then that's something I've got marked as a record that's changed. Because what we are looking at as saddle fitters is what's changing and what, and what we need to do with the saddle to make it continue to fit during these changes of both horse and rider. When it comes to details about the horse itself, I like to know their name and that is because we file things under the horse's name. And it's also nice to know the horse's name so that next time we go out, if it's a different horse, we know it's a different horse because it has a different name. Um, also the age. The age is really important. We need to know the age because when a horse gets to a certain age, their back can start to drop. Equally, when the horse is nice and young, they're likely to grow. Age is very important. Height speaks for itself, breed, some breeds tend to fit differently than other breeds, um, it's always good to get a good idea of what breed they are um, and how they're going to fit their saddle. I also ask about how many days a week they're in work, because if a horse is in work one day a week, then it's going to muscle up very differently than a horse that's in work seven days a week. I also ask what sort of level of work they do, again a horse that's in walk once a week going for a hack, it's going to be very different physically in terms of their muscle structure than a horse that's team chasing and eventing seven days a week. 
once we've gone through all the general chit chat and filled out your forms, this is a point at which I take a template of the horse. Now some people take a template of the horse at the end, but I take a template of the horse before we fit the saddle. So I take a template, we take, so that you'll know a template from that little bendy stick that we put over the horse's back and we squish it in to feel what width it is. We take a template of T8, T10 and T18. What were those words you say? So that's basically the T means thoracic, eight means eighth vertebrae. So that T8 is sort of about two or three fingers widths behind the back of the scapula, depending on how big your horse is. Um, that's T8. And then another couple of finger widths back is T10. And then the very last rib that we feel for the very last rib, and that's T18. And so they're the three main measurements that we take. They are really important for us. They're important for us to keep on record because they can show um, some change of shape in the horse. They're important for us because they can help us determine what sort of width of saddle we need on your horse. And they're also really interesting for you guys to keep hold of because you can kind of track your horse's change in your horse's journey. And that's always a nice thing, I think. We'll also sometimes measure the circumference, like where you'd put like a weigh tape around their tummy, like the like over their wither and under their belly, like where their girth sits, and pull that tight and measure that. And that's because sometimes horses can grow or expand or change shape, and it doesn't show so much in the wither templates, but it can show in, like for example, you might have a horse that, you know, in the summer is on hole three on his girth, and in the winter is on hole five, and yet his template doesn't change at the front, but his actual measurement, his circumference would change. These are all things that we are interested in as saddle fitters because we want to make sure that we can fit the saddle to your horse the best that we can. Um, you'll often find your saddle fitter will ask you to walk your horse up and down in hand or trot up and down in hand, especially important if your saddle has been slipping one way or the other because it's really nice for us to be able to see how even they are and how evenly they move. If you pop along onto social media, I've done some posts about saddle slippaging and how it's to do with the hind end of the horse if you're interested in any of that. So we often like to see the horse in movement, in hand, before we put the saddle on board. Then we put the saddle on and it's called a static fit. This is, we put it on when the horse is standing still. We try to get the horse to stand as square as we can. We put the saddle on, not all horses stand square and we could spend our entire life trying to make it stand square. So we do try to make them stand as square as we can and pop the saddle on and we assess the fit of the saddle here. There are lots of things we fit and that's a whole different video, but we assess the fit like that. And we'll assess the length, and we'll assess the width, and we'll assess the panels. And we'll look and think, does this saddle fit? And if we think, yes, it does, then yippee, we'll girth it up, tack it up, and put the rider on board. If we think, oh God, no, it's dropped a bit at the front, or oh, it needs a little bit lifting up here, then that's the time at which we do that. So a lot of people are quite shocked that we do flocking on site, but we do. Um, for example, if your saddle has dropped a little bit low at the front and you need a little bit of flocking in the front, then we are more than happy on site to pop a little bit of flocking in the front to lift you up and give you that balance at the front again. That's perfectly normal. So you don't, saddle doesn't have to be taken away for that sort of thing. That's all doable on site. I say all, most of it is doable on site. We can also, for example, if you've got an adjustable saddle and we think it needs narrowing or widening, that's a point at which we will do that. And then we get you on board, we tack, it, we tack the horse up and we get you on board and you off you pop and you have a little ride for us. Obviously in an ideal world we'd all have indoor schools with heating and air conditioning and a coffee machine in the corner but life isn't like that. So we ride wherever we can ride for saddle fitting but we do need to ride. So whether it's in an indoor school or an outdoor school or a muddy field as long as it's somewhere safe that you can ride your horse for us to see, then that's what we do. So we watch you ride, preferably in all three paces, and we assess then. If we think that what we've done to the saddle has worked, or if we think the saddle is fine, then that's it, we're good. So when we've done that, we've done any final adjustments that we need to do, sometimes we might put a little bit more flocking in, um, then we are done, and that's it. And that's your saddle fitting. Saddle fittings usually take between sort of one and two hours, and depending on how much needs doing. Sometimes if you're buying a new saddle, it can take a little bit longer. Now, if you're buying a new saddle and not having your current saddle fitted, after taking the templates, is the point at which we would get out some saddles for you to try. We would have a chat about what you look for in a saddle. So some people might say, I want a dressage saddle, and we'll say, would you like a deep seat? Do you like a big knee block? Or do you want to move around? Or they're, they're, that's the time that we ask that sort of a question. And then we will get out um, any saddles that we think might be suitable, and we would try them on. So we would try them on in a similar way that we'd try on an existing saddle, we'd put it on statically to begin with, and then we would narrow down the ones that we think fit well enough statically that we can tweak them, and we'd pop the rider in them and we would they would ride, and then we would see which ones fitted the best and which ones the riders liked the best. 
So once we've done all the riding and all the tweaking that we need to do, and if they're buying a new saddle, they've chosen the new saddle, then that's the point at which we're done. Our saddle fitting is finished. To sum up, there is nothing to worry about from a saddle fitting. The things that we want from you, that we as saddle fitters want from you are a clean enough horse, a safe place for you to ride and for you to have all of your stuff ready. And then from that, what you can expect from us is that we're going to fit your saddle and do the best that we can to make your saddle fit. A lot of people are really worried that saddle fitters are just going to come out and sell them a whole new saddle. But that's not true. If that was true, I would be driving a car that's not 100 years old and I wouldn't be living in a shed. I'm joking. I don't really live in a shed. I live in a house. This is my shed in the garden of my house. So many times I hear people say, oh, I don't want to get a saddle fitter because I don't want to buy a new saddle. But honestly, if you go to a a reputable if you go to a reputable saddle fitter qualified saddle fitter go on the society of master saddlers website which is www.mastersaddlers.co.uk and on the little drop down menu so you're like searching for put saddle fitter and then on the little area put your area and all the saddle fitters in your area that are qualified will come up if they're not on that list then they're not qualified or they're not registered with the society of master saddlers so pick from that list because then you've got then you know that you've got someone that's qualified well trained and has a Good governing body above them to look after them and to look after you. A reputable saddle fitter will not try and sell you a saddle that you don't need. They'd be more than happy to fit your current saddle if they can or sell you a second hand saddle or even just advise you because not everybody can afford brand spanking new saddles all the time and that's fine we know that that's cool. You do not have to get a new saddle every time a saddle fitter comes out and it really worries me the amount of people that think that that's true because what we really want as saddle fitters is for you to get your saddle checked every six months minimum. If you've got a young horse or a horse that's in an awful lot of work then every three months isn't out of the question either or even actually an older horse's back is starting to drop. Whether you have a three monthly check or a six monthly check please get your saddles checked really regularly because it stops problems from happening. I'm going to do a video in the next few weeks about the problems that can happen from a badly fitting saddle. But for now, that's it. I hope you found it useful finding out what to expect from a saddle fitting and what we as saddle fitters expect from you. Don't forget I do a monthly live video and I do weekly videos. Please, please, please don't forget to like and subscribe and ask as many questions as you can in the comments section below because I love a good question and it makes it all worthwhile when you like it or you subscribe or anything like that. So from me and Pumpkin, thank you ever so much for watching. Take care and lots and lots of love.